Asperger's in Society is a Manchester-based documentary about the relationship between autism and mental health. Over the course of the filming process, I was introduced to a number of interesting autistic individuals, and struck by the quality of these experiences and opinions, I decided to create a behind-the-scenes video series to showcase these marvellous people. This is one of them. So if you look at where I am. Uh, so first question is, uh, how would you describe autism to someone without it? Um, I'd say it's very difficult to describe because uh, it's very much a uh, daily experience. Um, and also I can only give my experience of autism, everyone experiences differently because um, autism affects everyone differently but also we all have different experiences in life. But one thing I found useful to say is that it's a bit like um, if you're neurotypical, which is basically not being autistic, uh, then you's like, you see life as a colour screen TV, you can hear all the voices, you can see what's going on, you can follow the plot of whatever's on the telly. But when you're autistic, it's like it's black and white TV and it's a bit fuzzy, and so you're missing some of the information, visual and uh, oral, so you're only really getting part of the picture of what's happening around you and you've got to find ways to interpret that. Um, so I think that's what I found the most ex uh, useful to explain to people, because they understand that difference, they understand the image. That was very good. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was brilliant. Um, question number two. Do you like, I know it's a bit pretentious, but <laughs> do you like being autistic? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a funny question. I think it's a good question because I think most autistic people would say yes and no, you know, in all honesty. Um, I mean, it, it also depends on the day um, because I do have some of the kind of skills associated with autism, uh, like I'm very good at understanding music theory, which is helpful for in my in my work, um, and I can sometimes be very perceptive about things uh, that are going on, which can be very useful. Um, but then, you know, the difficulties are considerable, you know, kind of, it affects my sleep quite heavily, um, it affects how I manage outside, um, so I have to wear noise cancelling headphones, and if place is too busy that will raise anxiety, so that's just an example of some of the difficulties um, that I face on a more or less daily basis. Um, so it's, it's got to be yes and no, probably more no than yes. What traits of autism do you like? I suppose you've sort of answered that one, yeah. haven't you, already? Um, what about... Uh, how how have some of the traits um, of autism benefited you in terms of daily life and work? Yeah, I think... Um, I can sometimes um, work kind of un unassisted for long periods of time, like I can uh, write pieces of music and do things for hours on end um, without losing interest or without um, needing to do something else, but that doesn't happen very often, when it does happen it's it's quite good. Um, I do tend to get distracted by things quite a lot. Um, yeah, so I'll to answer that one. Um. <coughs> This is the uh, the tricky one. Mm. Uh, what were your friendships, relationships like in in, in the past, and how do, do you think you view it differently now? I think I was um, quite lucky when I was younger to have some uh, very understanding friends. I wasn't diagnosed with autism until uh, about four years ago, um, but I think especially being uh, in, in, mu in the world of music, you know, people do tend to be more friendly. Um, and also you can do music with people without actually communicating with them verbally. So that, that helps to feel more relaxed 
in an environment. So I think um, on average for an autistic person I've done quite well socially because I've been quite lucky with who I've known. Um, not to say there haven't been problems and I've very often felt misunderstood by people around me. That's, that's more or less a universal experience uh, for people with autism. So, um, yeah, I think having a diagnosis has certainly improved my awareness of, um, of how to relate to people and now I realise that I'm not one of the neurotypical people. I can actually study what they do and how they would communicate and, and learn more uh, using intellect um, because instinctively I don't get most of what's happening in, in any social situation really. Really, uh, it's, it's quite nice to like li listen to you talking about it. Like I feel exactly the same. So yeah. You just gotta. Yeah. Well, it's a funny thing listen. because you know lots of things are common, but very few experiences are universal to autistic yeah. people. People yeah. are very different. Okay. Uh, question five: Do you think your autism has contributed to any struggles in your life? Um, I mean, I would say certainly it has. I mean, it, in forming personal relationships, it's uh, made it extremely difficult because unlike friendships where you can observe what people do, um, you know, how people relate to each other, um, you can't really do that in a personal relationship because it tends to be behind closed doors, so that's been a, a difficulty. Um, I have had some uh, personal intimate, intimate relationships, but uh, they haven't lasted and it's... I think it's all been because I've not really understood what I should do or how to maintain it, so it's just been more or less potluck. So um, yeah, that's that's a big area of struggle. And like we were saying before, that the sensory issues for me are a big thing. I'm sensitive to bright lights and uh, sound, background noise, like road noise and that, so that all... Um, uh, raises anxiety unless I can do something about it but they now do glasses see glasses have a, a bit of a filter on so they filter out some of the brighter lights and I've got noise cancelling headphones which uh, mean that I can go out so for example previously like I could go out in Manchester but not for very long before I'd get very anxious um, but now with um, my glasses and my headphones I can stay in Manchester for about up to four or six hours even um, providing I'm not outside all the time because it tends to be busy but I can go to a bookshop and you know enjoy Manchester for a short while which is more than I could in the past question okay. so, six how was school for you <laughs> did being autistic impact your experience in any way um, yeah well I read in a book by uh, Tony Atwood called The Complete Guide to Asperger's Syndrome, um, which says that it, every autistic person he's met was traumatised by their experience at school, assuming they went to a mainstream school. So I certainly would say that applies to me, I found it very traumatic. Um, and yeah, it was because the, the social side of it was incredibly difficult. Fortunately, I was good at the academic side, so I could at least enjoy learning stuff in the lessons I was interested in. Um, but the teachers didn't know what to make of me because in some lessons I was consistently getting top marks, A stars, and just doing very well and being a good student. In other, other uh, classes I was getting Gs, um, and I was getting, you know, um, what's it called, detention and uh, being sent out and they just couldn't understand how I could be so good in some subjects and so bad in others in every way um, but of course from an autistic point of view it makes sense because if you're not interested in something it's very hard to work at it um, so it does make sense of that but uh, I think they, they tolerated me because I was going to get some very good marks for the school and I end, ended up getting some quite good marks um, so once I dropped the subjects that I had no interest in. That's good. I've, uh, I've I had sort of same sort of issues at school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, Did you uh, go to mainstream or? Yeah, mainstream. Yeah. And they, they just didn't. 
they never did. It wasn't that I didn't understand any subjects; just they didn't know how to teach me. Yeah. Like they just said it in such a ambiguous way. When were you they, diagnosed then? At ten. At ten. So I was I was quite early diagnosed. Yeah. Lucky really. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was my mum. She's a she's a special needs coordinator. Oh <laughs> right. <laughs> That'll help. Which is, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so quite a big one here. Mm -hmm. Would you change anything about the way society uh, deals with um, problems that autistics have? Uh, I feel that um, society is moving in the right direction, actually. I feel that people are learning more. I don't think it's that people are willfully ignorant when the problems happen, it's mostly because they, they don't know what to do and they want to know what to do. And an additional problem and with that is that sometimes what will help neurotypical people will actually make it worse for autistic people. Uh, so for example, if someone's really stressed and they need to sit down, they don't want someone asking them how they are because that'll make it worse. Um, but again, if people know what to do, then my experience is they tend to do it. Um, but I think if people want to improve things further, I, there's lots of things, but basically if you really listen to what we say about our experience and what's difficult, and if, if anything, autistic people tend to underplay their difficulties and pretend they're not as bad as they are because they're used to having to do that in order to not shock other people as to um, what certain difficulties entail. So... Um, yeah, I think just listen to our concerns and make adjustments where possible and, and, and just be supportive in general. Um, that's what I would say. Yeah. Well then, okay. Um, so I have four questions left. Mm -hmm. Next one is, it's sort of a little bit similar to the, um, it's a little bit more of a relaxed question, mm. I guess. Um, if you could talk to your child self, what would you tell them? <laughs> I'd tell them to get a diagnosis as soon as possible. Um, I'd tell them to try and... When we get out of the school that I was in, I think, and go to a, a more appropriate school environment, um, and failing that, um, you know, to get support at the school, and so people, teachers and students were aware um, although I'm aware that you know that could attract bullying in itself, so I suppose. But the people who I've spoken to who have been to um, I don't know what it's called nowadays, but special schools, um, found that when they changed from mainstream to a special school, they were much more relaxed and, and happier there. So, so it's probably different for everyone. But um, yeah, I would just say try and get more support for yourself. That's what I would say. More. Next one is, what would you say to any autistics currently struggling in the school environment? <laughs> well, similar things, try and, uh, you know, get, get more support. Um, and also, um, to my experience, a lot of autistic people struggle with socialising, but not so much with each other, because there tends to be a kind of mutual understanding um, uh, and occasionally get like a family feel because people really do share very deep experiences which are understood by other autistic people. So if there are any autistic social groups, try and get involved in those. Uh, and even if they, they can be difficult, even for autistic people, to get into, try and force yourself to go a few times and then see if you can, uh, you can uh, get something out of that because I think that can be very, very valuable to have supportive peers who understand what you're going through. Nice little ones to uh, end it up. Um, what do autistic people have to offer the world? <laughs> well, again, it depends on the person. Um, but I think one thing that's very common is that autistic people tend to think for themselves, maybe because they've had to, but whatever the reason, um, I think most autistic people can think for themselves and can often really perceive what's going on um, in society 
and perceive what could be improved and how it could be improved. So again, it's like if more artistic voices are heard, I think it would benefit everyone because we tend to be more det detached kind of emotionally, which can come across as being quite cold hearted, but it's, it's not that at all. Um, it's just the way we process stuff is, is very different. But because we can have that emotional detachment, we can look at things without emotion and without bias as well and see, well, okay, that, that's a bit wrong, that could change. And so I think that difference of perspective is invaluable for society. And I believe that there's someone, I can't remember her name, who's doing a talk, I think it's in Reading, about historically what autistic people have done to improve society as a whole, not just for autistic people, but society as a whole. So uh, that's very interesting. And the young woman from Sweden, we heard of her, Greta Thunberg, She's the one who's leading the voice for um, action against climate change by young people and she's got a diagnosis of autism. So she's affecting the world, you know, with what she's saying. And I think that, again, autism is playing in her favour because she's not thinking about the consequences for herself. She's just thinking about the consequences for the planet and then taking action where many other people might have thought that and not done anything. So I think that, that's a really good example. Okay, okay. Uh, last one. Uh, have you enjoyed this experience and what would you like to say that you haven't already covered? Yeah, it's a, it's a good experience. I always like to talk about um, my experience with autism because there's um, not always people who want to listen for a start um, but also if it can improve life for other autistic people in society in general then I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, so what else would I like to say? I think I've said more or less everything. I mean the one thing I would underline that I think the thing we need most of all is understanding and that will only come from listening to us um, I think that's the thing. I think that when I speak to other autistic people, that's the thing that's most difficult. Um, it is not being heard and not being understood. And we are usually capable of explaining things if you just give us the chance to uh, to maybe take a bit longer to do so. Then uh, that I would really appreciate that for me and, and for others.